Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you all to worship today. This is the Lord, the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. There are, I think, two constants in life. One is God, and the other is change. Um, for those that don't know, uh, Dan Miller um, toast tested positive yesterday for COVID. Um, they're vaccinated. We're not looking at this isn't a life-threatening situation, but he is in quarantine, and of course, then Amy is in quarantine with me. She had with him. She has tested negative, um, and those were the home tests. So I think they're going to be doing more elaborate tests, uh, probably when things open up. So it, it, things will be a little different. For one thing, you're stuck with me. Um, and then you're stuck with Matt, who is going to do our interview today for um, Crim School. Uh, yesterday's block party was a wonderful success. Thank you to all who volunteered, to everybody who came and participated. The families were so appreciative. Um, and so I thank everybody for whatever support you gave. Uh, and then also there are yellow prayer cards in the pews. If you have a joy or concern you would like to have me share at prayer time, um, just fill out that card. And I think if you wave it over your head, one of the ushers will be able to get it from you. So with that in mind, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
me in the call to worship. We hear the voice of God calling. We feel the Spirit moving among us. We know the love of Jesus. Come, worship God together. Son, in a world full of anger and frustration, teach us, your servants, your friends, your sisters, and your brothers, to overturn the tables and tear down the fences which turn away the hungry and homeless, to feed and house the disciple that knocks on our door in the guise of a stranger, and to find the love we seek in loving others. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please take this opportunity to pass the peace to one another in whatever way you're comfortable.
during these four special Sundays is by having our scripture read in different languages. Peg Maidlow is going to read it to us in Spanish today. Esta lectura es de Lucas capítulo 10, versos 25 hasta 29. Un maestro de la ley que quería ponerlo a prueba se levantó y le dijo, Maestro, ¿qué debo hacer para conseguir la vida eterna? Jesús le dijo, ¿Qué está escrito en la Escritura? ¿Qué lees en ella? El hombre contestó, Amarás al Señor tu Dios con todo tu corazón, con toda tu alma, con todas tus fuerzas y con, con toda tu mente, y amarás a tu prójimo como a ti mismo. Jesús le dijo, excelente respuesta, haz eso y vivirás. El otro que quería justificar su pregunta replicó, ¿y quién es mi prójimo? Palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Thanks be to God. At this time, Matt Kerr is going to come forward uh, and lead us in our interview with Zeb. Good morning, everybody. At this time, we have Zeb Kello, who's the principal at Crim Elementary. Zeb, you want to come on up here? And Zeb is going to be sharing a little bit about uh, what we've been doing with CRIM, our mission and our partnership. And we're really excited to have you here today, Zeb. Uh, thanks for having me. So I'm going to pop on my glasses so you can see me a little better. <laughs> All right, Zeb. So if I can ask, you know, what drew you into school administration? And can you tell us a little bit about your career? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny because um, when I started out my path, uh, I was actually um, looking to be a youth and family minister. So uh, this took me down to Searcy, Arkansas, to Harding University, uh, where I was stud studying both education and also um, Bible. Um, as I got farther in my track, I started to really kind of think about where my heart was and where I wanted to serve, and I thought, well, school would be that. Uh, so then I got in the education field, um, dove whole wholeheartedly in. Um, I, I taught at Toledo School for the Arts, um, taught in Perrysburg. After a while, I had some of my peers tell me like, hey, you know, you should think seriously about going into administration. Um, and you know, that's, when you're a teacher, that's one of those things you look like, nah, I'm never gonna do that, right? And that was actually my first response. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna deal with discipline all the time and have parents be upset at me. That sounds like a great plan. Um, and then, Lo and behold, um, it was actually uh, a guy, uh, a man that we hired to be our principal at Toledo School for the Arts. He looked at me and he said, why didn't you apply for this job? And I never thought about it. He says, you're doing everything that I need to do now. You know, and I'm like, okay, maybe I should. So that led me into the direction of getting my administration license here at BGSU. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Ended up being in Fremont, Ohio as a little giant at Fremont Ross as assistant principal. Came here to Bowling Green. My wife teaches first grade at Conneaut. Um, Wendy obviously has been her parents. So that's been kind of fun. And I think Stacy actually was a parent at one point in time. Uh, and um, 
came to Bowling Green and we kind of thought, okay, this is where we can have our whole family kind of be here in the school system because before we were spread out. Sure. And uh, was an elementary curriculum coordinator and I always had my eye on Krim. So, okay, so I look at all the schools, new in the administration, why Krim? There's so many schools. Why are you drawn to Krim? Well, Krim is very unique in its structure and, and its relationship to the university. If you really look at it, it, what makes it unique is the students that come there to Krim for, it could be a year, a couple years, based off of uh, their parents being either university professors or university students at BGSU. So I always had my eye on Krim um, because I like that international um, vibe, I don't know if that's the right word to say, but that international presence that was there that really allowed a child to sit in the kindergarten classroom and have a peer beside them that would be from Nepal and then someone else would be from Bolivia. Uh, and having those experiences for our students there at Krim just always, it was very unique, you know, it was really, a uh, unique school in that way, um, you know, and of course, you know, Connie has some of those, but the university being so close to Krem, a lot of our families live right around Krem, and so it was that international connection that was important, because um, it really builds into that diversity that we want to have our, our kids experience, and then the other part is, you know, there's a whole gamut of uh, socioeconomics of people who, you know, might be living in, um, you know, free housing, government housing, then the flip side is you got students who go to our school who live in half a million dollar houses. So, you know, it's really diverse in that way. Um, the teaching staff is phenomenal. I, I knew that. I knew some of the teachers before I got into the field, but um, when Krim's, I might, I might have had a little bit of coaching to Miss Carafa, because she, of course, went to Conneaut. And I said, hey, you know, Conneaut's open. And she's like, I would like to go back there. I'm like, well, you go there. I, Definitely jump on board to take Krim, so it was fun. Yeah, so you chose the, chose the easy one, and I can imagine it's been not a challenge at all. But uh, speaking of challenges, what are your biggest challenges you face at Krim? You know, and you know, what inspires you? Does that things have to get difficult? So tell me a little bit about that. Yes, uh, so some of the more difficult things we're dealing with right now, um, obviously, is the influence of COVID and how that's kind of impacted our families. Uh, we have a lot of families who um, are struggling uh, financially. Uh, we have a lot of families who they, their family structure has been completely disrupted. Um, you know, Krim itself, we're, you know, we're looking at shortages for support staff. Every, every week I send out an email to our parents, um, or our guardians and parents, that, and I've been plugging this for a while, that we need help. We need help there at the school building of people just willing to step in and say, hey, I'll be a recess monitor sub from 11 o'clock to 1.30. I'm happy to help out for the you know the two hours, uh, two and a half hours. Uh, so that, you know, is kind of what we're struggling with, what we're dealing with. Um, you know, I have a, a phenomenal, unbelievable teaching staff. Um, and not just teaching staff, our, our our cafeteria staff, our custodian, our paras, all of them are invested in our students. And, and I love to see that. I love to see their heart. Um, but you know, it is something where there's a lot, a lot on teachers' plates, and there are a lot on our students' plates. So, you know, we've had to kind of flip some of our roles and how we've done it. Um, but in that time, you know, one of the things I've always done that to try to help myself. Um, is try to lead. I believe if you're going to be a good leader, you got to lead yourself first. And so, um, for me to keep my focus where it needs to be, um, I do a lot of listening to podcasts and, you know, obviously, you know, morning devotions and things such as that to make sure that I'm ready to serve the kids and meet the needs that they have there. So, you know, my my mom was a teacher, sister's a teacher, and a superintendent. So uh, I know. Um, I know the hours that you you know, impact the students during the day, but you know, can you share some of the challenges that your students face outside of school? That you know, I know you have an impact during the day, but your, your impact doesn't stop there. You know, can you share some of their what's going on with these kids? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, we 
basically we, uh, all teachers, right, we work from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock, it's great, we get the summers off, and that's all we do. Uh, make sure kids color, stay in line, that's all, that's all we do, right? Uh, of course, that's a joke, I mean, it, it never ends, and so what, what we're seeing is a transition to where a lot of our teachers are now becoming social workers. Um, they're becoming counselors. We have students who, because of the shakeup that's happened in the family with maybe COVID where grandparents now sick, now they can't take care of themselves, that families are struggling. They're trying to figure out how they can kind of put it all together to be able to help each other out. So, you know, that, that's been very hard because our teachers are, you know, they were taught how to teach pedagogy. They were taught how to, you know, assess students and find out what they need. But this obviously goes well beyond the classroom doors. This comes to a need of your students, and they want to do what's best. And, you know, a second grade student, an eight, nine year old, they're just going to tell you how they feel. I mean, they're not going to hold back. They tell me I'm old. I love that, by the way. You know, you're old, Mr. Kello. Thank you. So, um, but they'll just straight out tell you what's going on with their families, and they'll tell you about, like, my mom, she lost her job. She's trying to find work. So there's some economic issues that they're challenged with. Um, you know, the family structure, I, I mentioned about it kind of shifting. Some of it's broken down to a point where we have grandparents who are raising children. So if you're one of those grandparents out there, we thank you so much, really. Um, you know, you, you help make it work. Uh, but, you know, the family dynamics is, has you know, really taking a shift. So that's been a big challenge for us. So we all know, we, we see, we know the impact that COVID's had throughout the world. Um, I can only imagine what it's like to, to be an educator. I mean, fortunately, my, you know, my daughter was a junior last year and she can spin me around a computer far beyond what I'm thinking. If I had a kindergartner or a first grader trying to teach them or get them online or, you know, being completely 180, you know, can you share what's the life of a teacher been like the past year? Uh, hectic, very busy. Um, you know, I have in my office uh, a nice square box full of chocolates and teachers know that and sometimes they just roll in and don't say anything to me, they just grab a handful and go. That's kind of like their go-to, like I need a little stress reliever at the moment. Um, it, I, I, am, I was completely blown away. Um, I was, you know, we were talking outside about when all of a sudden I got the phone call from you know, Mr. Scrucci and saying, hey, all the kids are gonna go home, tell them to grab all their items, throw it in their backpack. You know, I remember the first thing I made that announcement and then running to two classrooms that had subs in there at the time to help guide the sub about what to take. Um, but just watching what our teachers went through to transition from in-face learning to then that digital learning, um, I, was, I, I was so impressed. I mean, I thought like, wow, this is, I mean, we, we can kind of move like a military, like boom, okay, let's change, let's go right now. Um, but, you know, with those transitions, it's been real challenging, I mean, it's typical where you're sitting down with a student, showing them how to count, showing them how, you know, add, subtract, using manipulatives, which is a fancy word that we use to say basically like coins or they have little bears, whatever it is to count, you know. Um, to, to go to that extreme of trying to figure out how to do that digitally was really a challenge. And, you know, our teachers, they rose to that um, and they did a great job. I'm glad we're back face to face to see the students. Uh, but, you know, definitely, that was a big impact for us. Um, our teachers handled it well, our students handled it well. If you were a parent or grandparent helping kids get online, thank you so much. Uh, I did have to send, I love this, I had to send reminders out just to help people remember that the cameras are on. So, you know, we had a couple moments where people would forget and walk behind the class in their bathrobe, so that was always awkward, but yeah. Those are the things you never quite ex you know, expect to experience as an administrator. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting year for sure with that. So, you know, are there ways First United Methodist here can you know, help you right now? Whether is that you know, through prayer? Um, can we help your students, teachers, administrators? How you know, can we be praying for you? What do you need and how can, how can we assist? Well, um, let me first say thank you so much for what you guys have already done. Our teachers 
love you, they know you, they feel your presence. Um, whether that is you stop in and give them, you know, we have goodie bags that show up at our school, or maybe, you know, a lunch was purchased for our teachers. They feel that and they appreciate that so much. But I think the first thing, no matter what you do, what you do or can't do, everybody can pray. And I, I spend a lot of my time praying for my students and praying for my families that are involved. So, you know, if you're sitting here and saying, well, you know, I'm a college student, I don't know how much time I have. You can pray. Pray for us. Pray for us as a district. Pray for our leadership. Pray for our students to be safe. Pray for our schools to be effective because, you know, we're, we're trying to cover a lot of bases right now and we're, we're missing people. So prayer, first and foremost. The second thing is if you're sitting here and say, well, you know, I'd like to be able to help. Uh, I don't know. How can I do that? Um, on a daily average, I'm down about 12 support staff. That's paraprofessionals who might work one-on-one -on -one with a child. Um, that is someone willing to be a recess monitor for, you know, like I said, a couple hours a day, or to fill in to be a, um, a lunch a cafeteria monitor. Anything like that would be helpful. And remember, it doesn't have to be a big commitment. Sometimes what we're facing is we have to have someone quarantined for two weeks and we, we don't have anyone who might be able to pick that up. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, feel free to email me. Um, you can talk to me later. But I think that would be a real nice thing. That's something that we definitely need. Um, the board, they're well aware of the shortage when we see help one signs everywhere. Uh, I mean, even our bus garage, we see them trying to find enough drivers. So. Any little bit you can kind of pitch in would help, but please, please pray for us. Well, will you all pray with me? Dear Lord, we're often seeking and looking to hear your voice, and sometimes your voice and your actions are working through individuals right in front of us. I thank you for people like Zeb that bring your voice, that bring Jesus to these students. Please continue to watch over us all. Watch over Krim. Help guide us. Help us find where our tools and resources can best impact others. Thank you for our many blessings. Continue to watch over us all. In your name we pray. Amen. If I could say one more thing, that's okay. I, I just want to really say thank you so much for all you do. Our families see it. They know uh, you are the hands and feet of Jesus. And... The reason I am an administrator now is because that's where my heart is. But you might think, like, well, how does it really impact? I've watched single moms be so thankful for the fact that they, they have a car seat to be able to now to put their infant in, to go to a job, to be able to make their lives better, to be able to help a family out who lost some items in a fire. Thank you so much for all you do for our families. Your presence is felt. Thank you.
one of the ways that we worship is by joining together in communal prayer. Uh, today we'll be using the prayers of the people format, which is marked by moments of silence and are spurred throughout the prayer. In each moment of silence, we invite you to share in your heart the prayers you have. Um, I feel somewhat compelled to add to what Zeb said. In the, I'm in second grade this year, and we are constantly having to remind ourselves that these second graders have never had a full year in a classroom. So they don't know the rules. They do, it's very, very hard on them. I think more than some of the older kids who have had been in school. So as you lift your prayers, please do pray for our children. I also have a couple other prayer concerns. Um, Doris Barger asks us to pray for her brother-in-law who's near the end of his life. Harry, pronounce it for me. Is she here? Niedermeyer? Uh, God knows. <laughs> Niederheiser, I don't, um, but he's near the end of his life, so prayers for the family. Um, also, uh, Diane Walter asked us to pray her brother Jim died yesterday uh, in Saginaw, Michigan after having Alzheimer's disease for several years, and I know that's been a long, hard struggle. Um, also, of course, we'll keep uh, Dan and Amy in our prayers. Um, the uh, twins, uh, Quinn and Reed and Amy are also quarantining because they were taking care of the kids yesterday uh, as uh, Dan and Amy were doing the block party. So we keep them in our prayers. And I did notice in our bulletin a 25th wedding anniversary for the Kerrs. So we rejoice with them. Let us then come before God with these prayers. God, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now. God, we pray for our community of Bowling Green, we pray that all in our community would know that they are deeply loved by you. Remind us that you ask us to be the harbingers of this message. Specifically, we pray for those in our neighborhood. We pray for the neighbors who participate in our food pantry ministry, the families and staff at Crim Elementary, the BGSU community, and our FUM Learning Center. Lord, help us to be better partners to all those serving your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news we have received, offering our lives in service of your kingdom, where the last are first, and the first are last, and there is grace enough for all. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. As your people, enable us to see the reality of racism that exists in our world and free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our churches, and ourselves. Remind us that the world is the way it is because we are different and the differences make us better. That in your good time, we want all nations and races to serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, 
O oh God of all comfort, we pray for those who have been, who are, and who will be affected by all that encompasses COVID-19. The physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and financial burdens are great. We specifically pray this day for Pastor Amy and Dan and their family that they may come through this uh, stronger and healthy. We know that not everyone is affected equally or justly. We pray especially for those who are risking their lives for the protection and sustenance of others, for doctors, nurses, healthcare staff across our world. We also pray this day, O oh Lord, for Jim Cloud and for Diane and her family as they experience the grief that death brings and anticipate the joy that can be found in the heavenly kingdom. And we pray for Doris's brother-in-law, brother-in-law, that he may have a peaceful entry into the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy, we pause to offer our silent concerns before you now. Where harm has left deep scars, bring healing. Where there is darkness, bring light. Where there is lack of direction, bring clarity. Where our inner struggles threaten to overtake us, give us strength. May our souls always find rest in you. So with all the powers of creation, with gladness and nourishment that sustains us each day, we pray together the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Another way in which we worship God is by giving our of our talents and our gifts. We can do the things we do as a church because of your generosity. The ushers will come among us at this time to receive those gifts.
Eternal God, accept these gifts we bring. Help them be the hands and feet of Jesus as you multiply and divide them and use them. In your name we pray. Amen. Jesus in a needy world.